we're going to do, as we um, talked about last week, everybody that's home online, we have about 12 people in the call right now. So we'll do, um, if you're at home, just for a brief moment, I want to um, show everybody here, if you can turn your cameras on um, so we can feel a connection from people worshiping here and people online. So uh, um, if you go to gallery view and then I'll turn my video on. Okay, that's, hold on, let me change the, the direction. Okay, why is that working? Let me see. Okay, maybe God is saying, skip it. But I'm trying to, what, why isn't that? Oh. Okay, here we go. Hold on. All right. Can you guys, no, that's my, can everyone at home? Hello. Say hi, everyone. Okay. So there's Officer Mike. Thank you. All right. Okay, get that out of the way. Um, let's read the scripture reading together. Uh, Genesis 4, verse 3 through 5, and let's read it in one voice together if we can, okay? Let's ready, go. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the first fruit of his flock and of their fat portions and the lord had regard for abel and his offering verse five but for cain and his offering he had no regard so cain was very angry and his face fell amen um we're very familiar with this passage and today uh First, just going over briefly uh, what the message was last week. Last week's title was Garments of Skin. Okay, Garments of Skin. And um, after our church service, we have online forum. And one of the forums um, that I heard, uh, it, it challenged me to think about. And also I, what I want to do is also to challenge you is the garment of skin, in order for that garment of skin to be made, it was the first recorded death in history now i just want to i want you guys to kind of try to think about that i don't know how many of you have pets no, anyone here have pets okay um imagine for adam you see so adam the highest of all uh creation named all of these animals get a very intimate relationship with them before adam had any sin he Animals would come to him and he would say, lion, or I, I don't know if it was lion, it, it, in his own way, he would name. So he knew the animals there. So after their sin, after their mistake, their fault in disbelieving God and believing the lies of Satan, the result of that was one of those animals that Adam knew had to die. And it's not just that that animal had to die. They had to wear the skins of that animal that was once alive. Are you following me? It was a very clear reminder of the result of their mistake. Not the death that they deserve. You shall surely die, as God said. It was put on an innocent animal that they knew. And it's not just the death of the animal. Oh, they saw the death. They had to wear that skin. Why was that necessary? Okay, the Bible, as we talked about last week, is very clear. Without the blood sacrifice, Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there cannot be forgiveness. Some one or some thing has to pay the debt of that sin. So Hebrews 10, 4, again, the blood of animals covers the sin. The blood of animals, it's impossible for the blood of animal to take our sin away. 
That is why we need the blood of Jesus. So why is the blood so necessary for worship? And let's go into the body today. The main point, worship. Why is it so important? Why is the blood so important for worship? And before we get into the blood or the content, the first point is, why do we need worship to begin with? Why? Why do we need worship? And what's more important, it's not just giving worship. And the title today is that worship received by God. That's more important. Anybody can go to church. Anybody can give worship to God. Anybody can pray to God. Anybody can sing to God. Anybody can come to church. But is that worship regarded by God or not? Does God receive it? That's more important. So first, before we get into the content, first is why. Why do you and I need to worship? Why can't we just be on a sunny beach in Huntington Beach or Newport Beach or Santa Barbara or in the hills? Why do we need to come together and worship? And church, that's a whole different sermon. We won't get into the, the biblical uh, um, support of church, but just worship in general. Why? Why do human beings need to worship? And the first point is because we're spiritual beings. We're created to do so. When you think of worship, what do you think? It's just so many things, right? Do you think of just singing or like hill songs? And that's a form of worship too. Do you see, you know, what, what do you, it's, it's so, so vast in its description and, and depth, right? But worship, simply put, is your mind your heart, your body, your spirit, your everything pointing to God. Acknowledging God, intimately knowing God, loving God. Uh, standing in awe of God. And it's not just we're it's not just that we're created to worship God. We're created to receive the reciprocation it we are created to receive the that god receives that worship and confirms it you know does that make any sense it's not it's a, it's not just a one way worship we're created to have a fellowship with god amen it's not just i love you god it's it's the worship to god and then god saying i receive and i love you too that's how we're created to be. That's why worship is so vital. Fish in the water, trees in the ground, birds in the sky. You and I, as human beings created in God's image, are created to worship God. That's why people that, um, uh, without the grace of God, living on their own, having everything, but having no happiness. Having you know, some form of happiness, but fake happiness. I like to call it fake happiness because there is some form of it. You know, if you have someone comes here and gives me $10 million in a suitcase, I am going to feel happiness. No, I'm going to feel happiness. My kids' college tuition is going to be no problem. You know, I can take care of my parents. I could, there's so many things that that money can get, but it's fake because it's not, true happiness money cannot give you true happiness because that's not how we're created to be we are not simply created to enjoy physical things we are created to worship god and not only worship but re that have that worship received by god and confirmed by god and we'll get into the result of what happens when that doesn't happen that's the title today. If you're worship, giving to God, loving God, if that love and worship and devotion to God is not received by God and regarded by God, that there's a terrible result of that. But we were created that way, and we have to go back to the source and root of what happened. In Genesis chapter 3, that direct connection to God was severed. And how it was severed is what we have to always remember. What was that? What was the, how did that become severed? It was man's choice and decision and will as we have the free will even today. It was man's choice to disbelieve God and to believe the lies 
of the enemy, Satan. And this is the lie of Satan. And he does the same thing. Satan said, if you eat of the fruit, you will be like God. Complete lie. Right? Because we were already like God. You see how he works? This is how sick and twisted his lies are. We were already like God. Do you understand what I'm saying? We already had it. But he made us think like we didn't. Oh, my. Are you following me? He makes it think like it's not enough. What you have, not enough. Christ, not enough. God, not enough. There's more. You're missing out. And that's a lie. Sorry. In Christ, it's more than enough. It's perfect, beyond perfect. It's complete. There's perfect, complete. It's more than enough. And all that we need, we have already. But Satan will say, no, 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 no. You need this. You need that. You need to be healthy or you need to be, this. and there's nothing wrong with being healthy. Amen. Nothing wrong with being healthy. But if you're not healthy, does that mean you don't have the fullness of God? If you don't have money, does that mean you don't have the full? You have it all. Health or not, even death cannot take that from you. In fact, death is the beginning of your realization of the fullness of it. It's the beginning, not the end. But Satan will come along and say, no, 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 no. If you don't have that, you don't have it all. If you eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, you will be like God. But we were already like God, you see. Image bearers of God. We had connect, direct connection with God. We had everything we could ever need. And ever want. But he plants the seed. No, no, no. God's holding back. And they disbelieve God. And the result of that was so serious. Immediately. Spiritual death. Can you imagine what that felt like? To be with God. Fellowship with God. And in an instant. It being taken away. And physically being able to see. That it's gone. The spirit of God that was there is gone. So their method to hide it, fig leaves, this then became spiritually ignorant now. How ignorant is that to try to hide something from God? Isn't that so ignorant? God knows everything, but they're trying to hide it. And yeah, they're trying to hide it. Hiding from God? How can you hide from God? So they become spiritually ignorant. and. Instead of taking responsibility, and this is God always giving us that opportunity and chance to come back. Instead of taking the responsibility and saying, my bad, I'm sorry. What do they do? They blame each other. And that's the work of Satan too. No, it's your fault. It's the woman you created. It's the snake you created. God, it's you. It's you put me in this situation. This the devil made me do it. No, no. If you really understand yourself correctly, you will see your sin. And that's what the law points out. And you will see your need for grace. And then God will say, here it is. And sometimes, even though you ask, don't ask for it, he gives it to you anyway. But the reason why we need to worship, because we're spiritual beings, and now that we're in a fallen state, we need to worship to change our spiritual state. Because that's how we're created to be, right? We're created to be connected to God. So the question is, is your spiritual state, are you God-centered or are you me-centered? Are you centered on at least praying for God, let me do your desire, not my desire. May your will be done, not mine. That's how you can judge and, and, and kind of check and see where your spiritual state is. Is it the work of the spirit? Of God, or is it the work of evil spirits? Is your fo focus and centered evangelism and missions and raising the next generation, or is it for your own success, for your own pros prosperity, your best life now? Quote, is that your focus? Because it will impact your spiritual state. So if you understand why we need to worship, the second thing is the content. What is the content? Of worship and this is very very important because from the content comes where the whether god regards it or not so there is a debate on this 
and I understand the debate. Some people say the content has to be blood. And the reason why God didn't accept the offering of Cain is because there was no blood. And I agree with that too. I agree with that argument, but not 100%. Some people say that it's Cain's heart that was the problem, not the, the offering itself. And the reason why they say that is because in the Old Testament, in the law, to give a sin or guilt offering, you were required to give blood. If you had enough money, you bring a lamb. If you didn't have that much money to bring a lamb, you would bring a bird or something cheaper. If you didn't have money for a bird, then God said, okay, bring some grain. If you didn't have access to those things, if you didn't have enough money, but the initial requirement is blood. So Cain... It's not that he didn't have access to the blood. If you look at verse 4, it says, in the course of time. This is a very important few words. He is the older brother of Abel. Adam and Eve, remember, when a skin was made, that animal had to be killed and the blood was shed. God taught them, this is how you're going to cover your skin, the blood. An animal is going to have to die. God told Adam and Eve, this is how you wait for the lamb of God. You give the blood sacrifice. And he taught that, their parents taught that to Abel and Cain, Cain and Abel, yes? But in the course of time, it's not that Cain, as a farmer, didn't give blood sacrifice. He gave blood sacrifice too, with the family. But in the course of time, Cain's like, you know what? You know, today I'm just going to give that fruit. He had access to the blood, yes? He had enough. It's not about money. They were everywhere, right? He just had to take one. And give it. Or he could have just went with his brother and gave it together and let the, you know. But instead of doing that in the course of time, he decided to do it his way. If you look here in the backyard, it's lovely. We have flowers here. This is, this is all my, my father's handiwork. F flowers and more, more flowers and, you know, vegetation there. Korean, you know, vegetables and all this stuff. And, and you farm. I see my dad and he, it's, it's, it, it's, not a, it's not a one, just plant the seed and it's done. Like. He researches and he waters. He makes sure that right now this, this tent is covering those plants and they're not growing as much as they need to grow. And like as, a, as, as someone who plants stuff, you have to keep all of that in mind, right? So Cain, he does all of that stuff and he brings that fruit in front of God. And what happens? Abel's offering is regarded by God and Cain's is not. Why? I believe it's not only content, but it's also the heart. Is Cain's heart, and we can see the result and say that he, his heart was not in the right place. His Cain's heart is, God, this is my fruit offering to you. I am a sinner. I need the blood. I need this life blood or this, the life that's in this grain to cover my sin because I have sinned against you. Please receive my grain offering. I believe that offering is received. But imagine what Abel has to do to prepare that offering. I don't know. I don't know how my grandma does it. My grandma in the countryside in Korea, um, we come visit. And when a special guest comes over, there's a dog that my grandma raises. I don't know. I might get into trouble. This is Korea, not America. Okay. This is what happens in Korea. But she's feeding the, the, the dog and animal. And then when a guest, special guest comes over, she, with her own hands, kills the animal for a feast. Uh, okay, that's a, that's a bad example. I wasn't planning on giving this example, but I was trying to illustrate. But imagine what Abel had to do. The firstborn of his flock. This is not an old, dying, aging lamb or a goat. Or like an old animal that's going to die anyway. This is a firstborn. Has all of his life to live ahead of him. He had to go to that firstborn. And he had to cut. He had to kill. He had to shed the blood of that animal. And imagine his mindset. I'm sorry. Little man. A little guy. Little animal. You know. You did nothing to deserve this but you're, you have to die for my sins. And imagine what he had to go through. And then taking that dead animal that was once living, a, 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 a young animal, and then placing it on the altar and saying, God, 
the blood is shed. Please receive it so it will cover my sin. The worship, it's not just the content, and it, it's, it's, it's and not just the heart, it's both. You can just, you can paint the blood and say, you know, but not have your heart not be there. Like Cain, he gave the fruit, but his heart wasn't there. That's why I agree with the argument that it's not the content, but his heart. His heart wasn't there because right immediately afterwards, when God doesn't regard it or receive it, he's angry. And the last point today, the result of not being able to, not, of God not regarding your worship is tremendous it's the first murder recorded in the bible and it's murder of brother on brother if you go to church not having your worship regarded by god it has serious results and there's no wonder why there's so much division in church you go to the buddhist temple there's no fighting just um, you know but you go to churches and why is there so much fighting why is there not forgiveness but judgment why is there not love and peace but jealousy and fighting why is there so much of that in church because people go to church many people myself included on days go to church and are not that worship given to god is not regarded by god they're not receiving grace they're not receiving forgiveness themselves they're not applying the blood of jesus they're not coming to God in worship in that way with the right heart. We have to paint the blood. Not only the content of blood, but understand, acknowledge your need for the blood of Jesus. We all need the forgiveness of God. Amen. And the power of that blood. The moment you paint it, it's done. It's finished. Amen. All of it's gone. All of it. It's been removed as far as the east is from the rest. But when you come and confess it in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, it's not that your sins are not forgiven until you confess. It's already done. But when you confess it, the power of the blood is revealed. Because that's true. It's the truth. We're a sinner, but the blood of Jesus removes and washes our sins away. Amen. That is powerful stuff, guys. Blood of animal covers. The blood of God removes. But you need to claim it to feel the power of it, to experience the power. Come before God and say, God, here I am. You know I'm a sinner. I bring the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the power of the blood. So after this horrendous event that happens god comes to cain just as he came to adam and he gives cain and he's giving him an opportunity he's giving him an opportunity to speak truth not to lie to speak truth to admit to ask for grace right he comes to cain and says where's your brother he comes to adam where are you what have you done he's giving him an opportunity we talked about that a couple weeks ago right all Cain had to do was, we don't know what God would say after that because that's not what he did. But all he had to do was say, my bad, God. <laughs> like, really, you know, even if he just said my bad nonchalantly, there would have been a different result. But he should have been before God and said, God, I need your grace. I made a mistake, a hor horrible mistake. But he doesn't. But God gives him an opportunity. He doesn't bring down the judgment right away. He gives him an opportunity. And instead of speaking truth, what does he do? Guys, the start of personalizing the gospel is to be true, to speak truth to yourself. You can deceive other people. You can't deceive God. You can't de and if you, if you deceive God, then you're just naturally just deceive yourself. But start... The start of personalizing the gospel is see your, to, it's to see your absolute need for the grace of God. To see your sin. But Cain's response isn't to see his sin. Cain's response isn't to see his mistake and his need for God's grace. That's not his response. His response is, I don't know. See how ignorant that is? Where's your brother? I don't know. And then his other response, am I my brother's keeper? 
That's how, if we don't, if our worship is not regarded by God, that's how we are. We have no in regard for people. Everything becomes everyone else's fault, right? So I bless you in Jesus' name that you give a worship that's regarded by God. You come before God, you ask for the grace of God, and claim and paint the blood of Jesus. Amen? And he says, forgiveness is there. I need your grace. That's why you're here. You think you've come on your record, but God has brought you here by his grace. Amen? And acknowledge that. That's it. So in conclusion, how do we apply this message? How do we apply the blood in deep meditation daily, daily? Change your spiritual state daily. Paint the blood. Realize the transformational power of that blood. We are new creation in Christ because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. If you are transformed and you see how transformed you are by the blood, you will naturally see your need and God's calling for you and mission for you to transform the world. It's natural. But if you don't see the transformational power of the blood in your own life, you won't see that need everywhere else. Daily have worship, communion with God. Partake in the blood. Take deep breath. You know, if you're in, in your daily meditation time, I mean, it's a great way. I mean, even um, the Jewish uh, tradition and all other, I'm not saying that we have to follow them, but they're doing something. The Jewish tradition, when they pray, they are very in tune with their breathing. Genesis 2, 7, God breathed into the man the, the breath of life. Your breath is a sign that God has given it to you. And just as real as your breath is going in, just as real as the blood as we take communion is going in, just as real as that physical air is going in your lungs, God is inside of you spiritually. When you meditate, do it on purpose. Just don't gloss over. Take time. Try to discard everything else. Take a few deep breaths and meditate on the word and paint the blood. Because when you do that and you realize your purpose and reason and mission, you will naturally pray for others. And that's the second application. Pray for others. It's not a coincidence where you work. It's not a coincidence where you go to school. It's not a coincidence where you live for your neighbors, for your communities. It's not a coincidence, the church that you attend or the churches that are connected. Guys, in a few weeks, we will be moving to a new location right down the street. There's no coincidence. It's not just one church in there. There's a, uh, another church, the, the host church, um, Trinity Lutheran Church. There is Hannah Vision Church. There is Pharaoh Church that we're connected to as well from our children's ministry. All these churches, there is a reason and purpose. We need to pray for them. It's not just my church going into another church. It is the body of Christ and believers everywhere. And we need to pray for God's plan. And it's not a coincidence that it's happening for our neighbors. Again, workplaces and schools. And lastly, most importantly, I believe, it's not just praying for the next generation. It's planning for the future. The children's ministry that's happening in our garage or out in the front yard, those little children, in a blink of an eye, those of us that have kids know, in a blink of an eye, they become youth. In a blink of an eye, they become college. In a blink of an eye, they become young adults. In a blink of an eye, they become the leaders, evangelists, missionaries, church lay leaders of the next generation. They are there. And if we just look at them now, they just like little kids. But no, 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 no. Pray and plan for our next generation. I bless us in Jesus' name that today our worship, not only today, but every day of the week, we would do give our worship that would be regarded by God. Amen? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace in bringing us to worship you this wonderful day. 
Father, receive our worship. Receive our humble posture, Lord, as we come before you and confess our need for your grace. Father, we thank you for what you have already done and finished. We claim the power of the blood. We confess our need for it. And not only today, for the rest of this week. And as we confess it, Lord, open our eyes to see that need all around us in our fields, especially for the next generation. We give you all the glory and pray these things in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.